welcome to my channel, I'm Avid Gamer. Now today I thought I'd give the long awaited uh, first impressions video of Firestorm. Now you might be able to tell today that um, this is obviously unscripted as well by the way just before we continue. I've got mixed feelings about Firestorm, Firestorm at the moment and you know like if you do the research and uh, just sort of like it's a, it's, a, it's a split bag honestly right down the middle um, like the community's like you know there's people that like it there's people that don't and I'm, I'm gonna say the people that don't like it are just people that don't really enjoy sort of like uh, the battle royale kind of like style stuff anyway there's not too many problems with it on a technical level you know uh, the maps are fine uh, the maps like I should say the map really uh, you know it's technically fine it looks great um, oh, by the way the little disclaimer here by the way um, this isn't a dig at dice or anything like that I'm not trying to put down uh, the developers or anything you know because honestly you know if uh, if they are listening to this, if you want to, uh, you know, let me have some early access to any ideas that you uh, have, like, you know, run them by me and, uh, you know, I'll give you my feedback, you know, because honestly, I think you need it sometimes from some just normal people that aren't quite big YouTubers and, you know, and as, as good as it is, like, to have all these, you, like, popular YouTubers that are giving you feedback and their game changes and all that kind of stuff. I still think like you need more of them and uh, you need more just ordinary people people that aren't quite big youtubers people that go to work every day make them some game changers you know because they play the game as well and uh, I think that's important you know just get some ordinary people just to come and help you uh, formulate some ideas and run it past them as well because you know when was the last time you heard of like any sort of big game developer just uh, picking up Dave off the street and going oh yeah you know what Dave how about you come and help us make a game and that don't think I've ever heard that you know <laughs> be nice you know Dave gets flown out to uh, Stockholm he gets put up in a five-star hotel he gets to go play Battlefield for a couple of days you know and then, and then he goes back to work the following week and uh, lay some bricks and plaster some houses or something you know but he had a little break from the mundane and he gets he, he gets to feel like he contributed to a game that he loves, you know? I think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, let's talk about the game. So uh, I've dropped into this area here. Uh, this is when I start getting attacked. I've had to run off without picking up any ammo for my SMG. So I've now only got a rocket, uh, Panzerfaust, and um, I think I've got the Lee, Lee Enfield. I run back to my little safety hole that I found up here because I know there's only one entrance point so that allows me to sort of protect my back and uh, I've got a nice enemy hit on him with the impact grenade there now this is the first glitch that uh, I spotted now this impact grenade I threw a second one you just see it sitting at the top of the ladders there and it hasn't gone off yet and now it has so it went off when he's run up towards it to come up the ladder or something like that so I'm pretty sure that's a glitch because you know it's an impact grenade it should have gone off and uh you know i'm happy that it didn't go off because obviously like it scared him and he ran away again so uh you know it worked out in my favor so that's all good now i was trying to blow up the house here uh with rockets just trying to make it uh sort of collapse in the corner that i was hoping he was standing underneath and uh it just didn't want to it didn't want to collapse uh for some reason even after two rockets so um i'm not sure if uh some of these buildings have got some extra damage or something like that. I was expecting the whole thing to come down in this corner. So another thing I'd like to say is uh, I'm not using headphones when I play. I just play um, listening to my TV. I'm not a big headphones kind of guy. Uh, I used to uh, use a lot of headphones uh, in my teenage years, you know, listening to music. And uh, I used to make music a lot as well. And uh, you use headphones a lot when you make music at night and stuff and I just felt like I've worn headphones too much in my life so I don't really want to do it when I'm gaming as well you know uh, I just use a little earpiece if I'm talking to people and that works for me 
So uh, I don't always have the advantage of hearing or being able to hear the direction where people were coming from. And uh, I've ended up having to run away, take some cover here, and uh, wait for my health to uh, sort of recharge. Now you're not going to feel it as you're watching this, but I've got to say, this is one of the good things that I did kind of enjoy. It was uh, my heart was racing. Uh, I could feel the tension whilst I was playing at this moment. You know, I was waiting to see if he was chasing me. I didn't know if he was chasing me. All that good kind of stuff. So, so like when you get pushed into a corner, uh, things like that. You know, it is you do feel the tension and uh, it's kind of dramatic. So I've moved up to this building. I start hearing these footsteps here. I'm in no position to kill anyone, I've got no health packs, I've only got a little tiny bit of health, I'm nearly dead, I've got 15 rounds in a, in a sniper rifle and uh, a gun with no ammo, so I'm not in a very good position at the moment, so I'm just trying to survive. Uh, I line myself up with a barrel that's just in front of me there, hoping that he might come out the door that's just in front of me, I shoot the barrel and uh, you know, save the day kind of thing. Uh, that doesn't happen, he's obviously sort of looking around still looting he's having a little look for me still i think and uh yeah i'm just taking my time i don't really like camping but there is some times when camping is necessary you know like at the moment there's honestly there's no point in me trying to engage or do anything if i get caught cool, i'm gonna get dead like pretty much i'm gonna get dead <laughs> well, i'm gonna leave that in i'm not gonna edit none of this out pretty much only if i like i don't know cough or say a really bad joke maybe I don't know I never really edit my bad jokes <laughs> so uh, he's run off now uh, allows me to go find some ammo for my gun and uh, I'm just creeping around nice and slow at the moment because I don't know if there's anyone else still in the area I don't even know if he's run off too far he could just be creeping on the other side of the building as far as I know so just moving around slow now I just want to touch uh, about the map design and stuff like that um, in this sort of like period here while there's not much going on like I say like visually like the map's stunning you know it's the frostbite engine it's really gorgeous you know like I can't I can't fault them for how things look I just wish the map design was a little different you know um, to me I feel like there's too much snow on the map um, I mean, if anyone's like sort of new to the Battlefield series and that, like if they only just bought Battlefield 5 for Firestorm or anything like that, it's probably not going to bother them. But to me, I've played a lot of games the last few years. Uh, they've featured a lot of snow maps, and I'm just kind of like snowed under by it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let that one sink in for a bit. <laughs> that was all off top of the head there. It just kind of rolled off the tongue. But um, so about two thirds of the map is like snow. And, uh, you know, I've played Battlefront on the Hoth map, uh, the beginning section of Red Dead, you're in the snow. Uh, Battlefield 1, you've got the Russian maps, that's all in the snow. Uh, then Battlefield 5 has got Fell, Narvik, all in the snow. And then pretty much most of this map is in the snow. So, um, yeah, you can, you can kind of feel why like, I might be feeling a little bit, you know, uh, tired of them sort of snow settings as well. And... To me, I kind of feel like it might just be like a, a quick way of texturing the map. You know, if you've if you've got a real large area of a map to cover with textures and that, um, it's a lot quicker just to cover it in snow than it is to put down grass and lots of gravel effects and uh, pathways and stones and grass and like you know what I'm saying. All these sort of textures that are on the floor in front of me now, like when you get to the snowy areas. You don't have to bother with that. You just put some snow over the top. <laughs> and then some trees with some snow on it. You know, it's, it's, I know, like, it, it, I don't want to play on it too much because most of the things that annoy me in this, it's all subjective. So, you know, don't hate the video. You know, I'm not trying to bash anything. You know, this is just preferences. Uh, you know, things that I like, you know. The gunplay is good, you know. Like, it, this is one of the strong points of it. Um... Even though I'm, I'm not too fond of like, uh, I'll, I'll get to this in a minute, about uh, some of the weapons and stuff. But if, uh, I just want to touch on the actual gunfights and stuff. I've always wanted a battle royale game uh, with controls that, um, that I like, you know. It feels smooth, it feels responsive, there's no delay from what I'm doing and what's happening between my, uh, my character and 
things like that. So I've always wanted a, a battlefield kind of feeling battle royale and this is what it is it you know it does deliver that you know like the controls of exactly how i want it it's exactly the sensitivity that i enjoy playing at all that kind of good stuff you know now to go into the weapons and uh things like that you don't get any attachments um well you do get attachments but you've got no way of taking them off or putting on new ones or swapping them to other guns or anything like that and i've got no no inclination about why they would do this uh, because basically like you know it, it limits you to like what guns you're going to be picking up you know and anything that's limiting people you know in a sandbox environment I think's like a bad idea uh, for instance um, let me say this is tying into the weapons thing at the moment right so some weapons only come with like 20 rounds in the magazine like for instance the Sumi uh, the Thompson machine guns, SMGs. So them 20 rounds isn't very much. In in the normal multiplayer, you can spray maybe one, two people, like if you're lucky and you hit every bullet with them 20 rounds, because these guns fire so quickly that uh, the magazine's pretty much dry in a, like a second. You know, you'll fire all your rounds. Now, in Firestorm, your character's got increased health okay so he's got 150 health so that's going to require a couple of extra bullets from these 20 round magazines now if he's picked up some armor he could have an extra 150 armor as well okay on top of his health so you see what I'm, I'm tying this into some guns don't suit this game mode okay because uh, if you've picked up a a gun that you're using because you prefer the iron sights over the the ones like the aperture or the cross like you know any sort of uh, any any other sort of attached sight to it basically if you don't like them and you'd rather use an iron sight gun you're always going to have the reduced ammo capacity now 20 rounds isn't enough to kill one person who's got full armor okay so this it's, it's a flawed design you know this doesn't work it's, it's, it's something they've neglected to think about so if I want to pick up a Thompson, uh, which is equipped with a drum magazine, which has 50 rounds, which is more, you know, it's definitely what you want. If someone's wearing armor and they've got 150 health, you know, you're gonna, um, you basically, you, you know, you're gonna want to pick up that drum magazine. But if you don't like that that sight that's been attached to it and you want to take it off, you can't. You know, this this is a flaw in in game design, and. Uh, it's something that I think has been overlooked and I, I really hope that they fix that. Now, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about what was going on just what, and uh, what just happened there. Now, you see, we all got caught up in the fire. Um, we can't see each other, you know. I, I, there was a guy who was two guys behind me. One of them run straight past me and then another guy was literally right behind me whilst I killed the other one. And uh, he wasn't e able to tell what was going on there. And I think this is due down to the firestorm causing so much noise you know it's covered some of my gunshots and they're using headphones so it's going to be overpowering for them and uh, I think that's a good thing that is definitely a good thing you know so no one can hide in the fire too easily you know I, I wish it done a little bit more damage you know it's a little bit more serious and I know it gets more more intense the uh, the further you get into the rounds and stuff like that but overall, pretty happy with the Firestorm, you know, you can't use it to your advantage too well. Now, you can see how difficult it is to loot things. Um, for some reason, they've decided to go for the uh, just spilling everything out onto the floor approach when uh, when you kill someone. Again, this is a flaw in design. I've got no idea why this was even, like, got part, like, you know, who, who made this, honestly? Who, who put that in, you know? even as just a quick feature for it to happen when you kill someone in like one of their pre-alpha game modes that they have in-house or something you know even if it was just put in just so that the guns appeared when you killed someone you know they should have known then that this was not a permanent thing that should be staying there you know this is like this is like pre PUBG kind of style like H1Z1 does this you know you kill someone all their guns spill out on the floor and everyone knows how kind of basic that game is it's a good game and i really enjoy h1z1 it's really arcadey and fun 
uh, you know, it's, it's a real fun game to play. But the only problem with that game is the looting system as well, you know, things kind of just fall on top of each other at times. So uh, why why this sort of made it to uh, Battlefield 5's Firestorm, I've got no idea, you know, it should be uh, all contained in a little box, very similar to Apex. And, um, you know, the prime example here, you know, um, all this guy's loot spills out, I can't pick up what I'm trying to pick up, you know, I need ammo for uh, my rifle gun here and things like that. And I try picking it up multiple times, it doesn't work, I end up swapping my gun. Um, things like that, it's, it's, you know, it's just awkward, it's just awkward. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the other things that I sort of do enjoy about it, you know. If you're playing as a squad, I haven't played many squad games by the way, I've mostly done uh, solo at the moment, because um, with solo I, get, I tend to feel, think that uh, it's a better way to test the game, you know. Um, everything it's done by me I'm relying on myself only you know so I'm not I'm not following the team I'm not waiting for teammates to like help me or anything like that so I just think solo is a better way to experience all the mechanics and things like that just for myself like without being confused by uh, what some teammates will be saying to me on the mic or anything like that so um there's a different a few differences between the team games and solo when you play solo you're definitely going to experience a lot more camping it's a lot easier for one person to hide than it is for a team of four and uh it's hard you know if you've got a play style which is aggressive and you're playing solo you you really got to learn to change your game slow it down a little bit you get people that are hiding waiting for footsteps and things like that now admittedly there is a few times when i pause in this and I uh, take a little breather, I'll open up the map or I'll try and have a look at my inventory and things like that. So a lot of the time you might be confusing someone that's doing the same as camping. You know, you've turned around at that split second and you've just seen them, uh, you know, just as they're coming out of their inventory or their mini map or something like that. But as you'll see at the end of this video, you know, and uh, there's a lot of hard camping going on, a lot, especially towards the end. There's nine people alive now and uh, you see I put up, is this where I put up the flare? Okay, so I'm looking at the mountain here, I pull up my map, I'm thinking what's my best route to get up there? So I've stopped and I'm actually contemplating something here. I'm not just camping, waiting for movement. Okay, so I'm going into my inventory, I'm looking for my flares. Okay, now watch when I put up the flare. You'll see there's a little red dot that pops up just behind me quickly and then there's like two just in front of me and they're not moving. There you go, so there's two there. One popped up behind me quickly, it's not shame but so they're all just sitting there still, okay? I, I was actually physically on my way forward, trying to trying to move forward and uh, have that push forward combat kind of. Um, that's a reference to Doom there, by the way, in case anyone doesn't know. That's a term that the Doom developers use, push forward combat. And you know, there I go, like, I've put it up again. The guy behind me, you know, he's showing up properly now, so I run back to get him. Here you go, he's just sitting there waiting in a bush. He hears someone come in, so he decides to move, and I catch him real easy, you know. So you, the amount of camping is something that kind of frustrates me, but this is something that you just got to deal with in uh, battle royales. When it comes to uh, the team games, you're gonna find there's a lot more less. Uh, it happens a lot less because obviously, like I said before, it's a lot harder for four people to hide than it than it is for one person. So uh, I think someone got killed because I shot my flare up. It allowed someone else to spot them as well there. So. Um, I think your flares show up for everyone, you know, so if there's two people camping next to each other, the flare will show each other, uh, it'll show to each, other, each of them, rather, I should say. Right, so we're drawing close to the end now. It's been a, <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a uh, live commentary for 20 minutes or 23 minutes or something, however long this video is going to be, I don't know. So uh, we're coming to the end now. Now I've just got to this area here, yeah? I'm, I'm late to the party, okay? So straight away I've turned up and uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to push momentum to happen, all right? I'm trying to make something happen. I blew up that little building there. I've just took a rocket at that one. I'm trying to force something to happen because I know there's campers here, all right? There's people up here already, okay? So I'm still having a little look behind me now and then just in case there's someone chasing me up the mountain, you know, that could still happen. So have a little look back, 
Now, admittedly, there are times when I pause, you know, I, I do pause for a couple of split seconds looking around. So I'm climbing these rocks here just to see if there's anyone camping. But I'm having a little look, all right? Having a little look, see, giving away my position here, you know, because no one else is doing it. Everyone else at the moment, they're all just sitting there nice and happy doing their own thing. And uh, at least I, I'm doing something to uh, push combat. And this is something that just doesn't happen at the end of solos too much. You, ha you, you have to find another player who's, uh, who's like me, real aggressive. Um, you know, we're not a rare breed, you know, we're not that rare. There's a lot of people who pray. Uh, who pray <laughs> there are a lot of people who pray but uh, there's more people that play aggressively in battlefield than what people realize uh, you know and they just use that push forward combat stuff you know we're not thinking too tactically we just like to push forward you know and uh, make things happen so now I'm running about pretty much like a bit of a loon trying to find these last few people you know no one's doing anything they're all waiting for that firestorm to push them forward or they're waiting for someone to do what I'm doing and uh, just run across their sights you know and you'll see that towards the end of the game uh, I'm gonna say now that I don't win this game okay and uh, you just see how bad it is for some people that do sort of adopt this uh, tactical play style and there will be some people out there that argue for it, you know. Oh, this is, you know, you can't just always run around shooting, um, you know, and you have to be tactical and things like that. And yeah, I can understand that. But it's also just being boring, all right? <laughs> you know, you're not, it's not, look, check this guy out, all right? So he's sitting there waiting for me to run past him. He catches me off guard, okay? Now, he gets killed straight away. So there he is there, all right? So... He's given away his position. This guy here, he killed him, all right? So this guy, all right, this this footage here, I sped it up, all right? Because um, he just literally sits here for like, I don't know how long it is, but it's, it's quite a long time. He just sits here not doing anything. This isn't tactical. This is boring, all right? Tactical's moving around slowly, still hunting and still trying to find your target. Look, you can see him up there, the top right. See him running around? He's still, he's still not engaging him. He's just looking around, you know, uh, wondering when the fire's coming towards him. He's like, how long have I got before I need to move, okay? He's waiting until that guy gets into a position which benefits him, okay? So the other guy's got no chance. He takes a pop shot at him here when he stands so still that he could hardly miss him, okay? That's what he's waiting for. He's waiting for that pure 100% advantage, okay? Now the fire's got to him. He has to move, okay? He wasn't moving until his butt was on fire, okay? The other guy, he's been caught off, caught off guard, and yeah, you know? So, there we go. This has been my impressions of Firestorm. I hope anyone doesn't take it too seriously. This is just my impressions and my experience so far. So anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Avid Gamer, and I'll see you soon.